Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter. That is Tim. As always. Yes, it is. <laughs> My god, one day we'll have a smooth intro. <laughs> uh, this is a horror movie podcast. We get together, we talk about a movie that we watched. It's really that simple. It is the October Thon, which means we've got a bunch of extra episodes all month. Uh, that's why we're in the orange orange overlay as well. Um this is actually a vote winner episode. We have multiple votes uh, this month. Usually there's one vote well. That's not technically true anymore. Technically, there's also a $10 vote now for streams, but every month at patreon.com slash TV, the regular $5 vote between four films uh, is a thing we do every month. Uh, there's extra ones in October, so we had a slasher movie vote as well, and the winner was this film, The Initiation from 1984, which is what we're going to get into. We'll start spoiler-free, as we always do. We'll give you a warning before we go into spoilers. Somewhere in the middle. Uh, the basic premise of this one is that uh, the main character of... Uh, not Francis, Kelly. Kelly Fairchild. For, uh, I list the, the adults first for some reason, even though they're clearly not the main characters. Mm. Uh, Kelly Fairchild is a college girl who is trying to go into a, a fraternity? Sorority. Sorority. That's the right one, yeah. I'm so, <laughs> we don't have these stupid things in the UK, okay? I, I, I always forget yeah. which one's which. Because... Yeah, there's no such thing as a paternity. Paternity is just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what threw yeah. me off. I'm like, it must be fraternity because paternity is surely the male one. No, paternity is just, sure. you know, you know, the paternity of a child. Like, you know, you right. can see where my, my mind went there. Anyway, so sorry. And her and her friends are in the sort of almost at the final week, the hell week of in, the initiation, you know, to go with the title, uh, to get into the, the thing. And they want her to steal her dad who basically owns or runs a giant department store like a mall and so they can go in and do like a prank uh is their thing but of course there's a killer going around killing people throughout <laughs> the film which maybe ties into a mysterious part of her past because our main character of kelly has amnesia from the age uh up until nine uh, something traumatic happened at the age of nine which a dream sequence at the start kind of hints at and we kind of uncover what some of that means throughout the film and where it goes from there so uh, but it's a slasher movie, people are dying, and you know that once they get into the mall at late at night, that that's probably going to be where a lot of the uh, the real chaos starts to happen. So, that's the, the basic gist of it. Uh, so, Tim, well, first yeah. of all, had you seen The Initiation before this? Oh, God, no. <laughs> you sound so offended at that, uh, which <laughs> maybe gives me an indication of what you're going to say next, but how did you feel about The Initiation? Uh, yeah, I actually, uh, I liked it quite a bit. I thought it was a lot of fun. Why did you imply that you didn't like it in the previous <laughs> comment? Oh, I, I mean, I, I, I didn't. I wasn't trying to go for that, <laughs> but what you what took do, from what, it. What do you mean? Oh God, no! How? How? how why would I take <laughs> anything but I do not like this movie from that statement? I, I, I don't know. I'm not in that head of yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Jesus, can, can thank every demonic god there is that Tim is not in my head. Um, yeah, I, I do think it has a pacing issue. I, I like the movie overall as a sort of like, you know, kind of not a great slasher movie, but it's a solid one. I think it's a fun watch. Uh, yeah. Less so for the kills and more so for the, the kind of the crazy plot and your typical slasher movie yeah. characters that you can get into. But I would say that it does have kind of a, a pacing issue where... Sure. It's a movie of two halves, because the second half, which is all in the, the, the mall after hours, I think that's the fun half of the movie. The first half, yeah. which is a lot of, like, her going to, like, the the teacher's aide who's, like, doing, like, sleep and nightmare analysis yeah. and stuff like that, is, like, <laughs> uh, the pacing in that half's a bit on the slow side. I could have done with progressing a bit quicker. No, I, yeah, I definitely agree. It has a lot of the 80s cheese uh, that I like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely more so in the second half, like, to the point where... I just think it's so funny where it's like the movie is called The Initiation. So you're like, oh, this is going to be like a college slasher movie where people are killing people like you know, at the sorority and stuff. And it's like, oh, no, it, it's not. This is like uh, at some point it just turns into an after hours mall movie, <laughs> which is like, oh, OK, no, I'm totally here for that. Um, but yeah, like like you said, there's like a ridiculous plot line. Um, I think the you know, the killer's fun. Um you know they they use they use a like variety of different uh tools and weapons uh which is always kind of cool and um yeah there's like a, a you know just like some like you know 
goofy there's... dumb 80s characters and... yeah and plus there's there's the ending which does introduce yeah, a, yeah. <laughs> a very memorable element to it so which it, the, the funny thing is like i, I like I, I don't think i really saw it coming but my wife like totally called it she was like oh yeah this is gonna like pretty early on before it was even like a you know kind of hinted at she was like oh this is gonna happen and she was Weird. totally right i i yeah. not this time this is the second time i'd seen it so i wasn't predicting anything this time but mm. the first time i watched it i did remember having a guess that was kind of close mm-hmm. to the, the ending but not the, act, the actual thing yeah so uh but yeah, you know, we'll get into all that in spoilers, of course. Uh, I, you know, I, I think the kills are there's a variety of them. I don't think the gore is the most exciting in the world. It tends to be really simple yeah. stabs and really simple just kind of wounds. Nothing super, you know, elaborate or over the top or or grisly. But yeah, the characters are entertaining enough to watch. There's some you know goofy, you know goofy idiots in there. You know the the guys For have sure. <laughs> sufficiently dumb dialogue. Of course, there's at least two scenes in this where someone takes a top off. In fact, hell, there's full frontal at one point. There's a, there's, a, there's a conversation that takes place right outside the showers in the, the sorority house. So the like, there's just a woman gets out of the shower and walks past the camera, butt-ass naked. Because uh, that was essential to the plot and the, <laughs> the, you know, the, the themes of the film. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. They're all gilly <laughs> of it, but, uh, you know, it's just that's what it is. Um... So, no, but there's the stuff, you know, there's clearly something that our parents are hiding from her. They don't want her to, they clearly don't want, want her to know anything about what happened to her at the age of nine and before. <laughs> so they're, they're keeping everything in the hush hush. Um, and, you know, the first half of the movie does deal more with that because a lot of it is kind of like her trying to remember, you know, figure out this dream and why she's having the dream and the parents like, ca- intervening and, and so on. Yeah, it- and the dream is like wild too. Like that opening, like oh yeah, few yeah. minutes. <laughs> there's a lot that happens. I was I was kind of like, um, I I gotta admit it did uh, start me off on the right foot. Like having this pretty crazy opening. <laughs> I think it was it was smart in a way from our perspective because the dream is crazy enough that it helps you through some of that early stuff. that's a bit slower afterwards. Yeah. Because you know, yeah, like I say, once it gets to the the mall, which by the way, this mall. It's like the the least <laughs> mall looking mall I've ever seen. It looks like a, sure. it looks like the corporate headquarters or somewhere. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's got like a big lobby, but it's, it's it's like it looks like just identical like floors of like what what I would assume would be offices instead of like. But it is stores. Like there is like you know they're in a dep- department store at one point. And there's they're trying on clothes at one point. So yeah, and it also looks like there's a lot of floors, which like I don't know, like. Usually when I think about like the malls I go to, like it's usually maybe like three or four floors. At you know, most, top. yeah. 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 It's like, I, yeah. I, I would say most tend to just be two. It tends to just be like one upper yeah. floor and one lower floor. But yeah. Uh, you know, times are different. I'll you know, I'll accept that. Uh but yeah, it's like you said though, it looks more like a like a corporate office that, building or something. That said, what do you think the the, the betting is the building actually is a oh, office of building? But yeah. <laughs> they're just pretending it's a mall, and obviously the, the shots where they've got like a store that they're in, they're, yeah. just, they're either they've set up one place to look like that, or they're shooting that somewhere else. Like that's the yeah. most likely uh, answer here, uh, because I I remember thinking it was in a mall. The last half of the film was in a mall at night, and that's a really cool setting, and yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. Um, such as the classic shopping mall. Um, there you go. <laughs> but you know, the, the, when I first saw the building, when it first cut to the interior of the building, I was like, oh wait, this looks like an office building. Like, oh maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's not a mall. But then the movie kept going. It was like, oh no, it actually is uh, yeah. stores and stuff. Okay, fair enough. Uh, oh, clearly, I remembered correctly. It just doesn't look like one. <laughs> so, no, interesting. Um, so you know, this is all right. I I I I think uh, it it never manages to become because I, I think there's like obviously there's the big name slashes, right? We talk about Friday the Thirteenth and Halloween and whatever. And then I feel like there's like the gems that sort of rise above to the, the top of the pool where it's like, hey, these ones are genuinely really good because they have good kills or good gore. I'm thinking something like The Prowler, which is a proper nasty little slasher movie or, you know, other stuff like that. Tim, do you agree, disagree or anything? Uh, I'm neutral. <laughs> you're neutral. but uh, No, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, like yeah. it's, uh, it, it doesn't... Like I, I wouldn't put this as like a um like a cult classic. Like it's no, no pieces, even though like, uh, pieces are a good example, yeah. Yeah. 
it, it like even though like i i do feel like it um honestly like does share some you know like similarities uh to it um you know like including opening up on like a weird <laughs> you know childhood mm-hmm. scene and stuff or yeah i guess in this one it's a dream but yeah pieces that actually happen but um but yeah like it, it's not as outrageous um that like <clears throat> that um yeah it, it would elevate it but at the same time uh, i'm not mad that i watched it i uh oh, i had fun um uh, it was enjoyable for sure yeah um i i i think it's a perfectly watchable movie it's one of those things where i if you like slasher movies of the 80s and you enjoy the cheesy elements of it this is one where it doesn't excel at a lot of the elements but it does a you know it's, it's got a decent set of likable goofy characters it's got a decent set of you know the enjoyable kills if not the most inventive or gory and then it's got i mean the ending's probably the craziest thing about it but it, it, you know yeah. <laughs> the opening and the ending have the crazy elements everything in between doesn't even feel that crazy so it's, it's it kind of straddles the line and ends up being kind of like a i don't know like a you know if, if most slasher movies if most good slasher movies are really b movies because obviously they're not high art uh, <laughs> this is like a solid c tier slasher movie i guess sure okay yeah, yeah. i agree with that that's what I'm going with. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, I think, I think we'll uh, obviously give the spoiler warning here. But before I get into the spoilers, I will take this time to thank our Patreon producers for the month. So thank you to Tyler Hess, Cindy Palacios, David Short, Board Now, Al Tribesman, Christopher Moy, Brett Williams, and David Brown. They are Patreon producers for the month at the time of recording. That means, of course, that they are $20 or more patrons uh, on patreon.com slash TV. And you can support us over there for as little as $1 per month. And for that $1, you get access to an exclusive bonus episode of Screams every single month. You get four bonus episodes in the month of October because it's a special occasion. It's the festive jolly time. Uh, not including Christmas, of course, but we do Christmas movies then. But uh, so you get, you know, there's a whole back catalog. So if you sign up now for $1, you get access to almost 30 extra episodes at this point. And of course, $5 gets to vote and stuff and early access. $10 has another vote called the Echoes by Morning vote now. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on uh, over there. But if you don't want to do that or you can't do that, do not feel bad. You can support us for something simple like a like on YouTube. Hit the like button. It helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. More people will find us. It is a simple and easy way to show your support as well as comments and stuff like that too. So uh, please do any of that stuff. Any and all. Whatever you feel comfortable with sure <laughs> i'm putting tim on the spot because he was mid yawn i'm like you know what i'm just gonna wait until tim can respond to something because i'm a dick uh <laughs> but anyway yes yeah, so and thank no you no argument there yes thank you to <laughs> thank you how dare you <laughs> thank you there's a, there's a character in this movie who literally dresses as, as a dick <laughs> yes his costume it's not even a halloween costume they're doing like a costume where you're because they're all psych students they're all doing like your your hidden desires so he has mm. hidden desires to be a, a dick <laughs> like a life-size <laughs> dick <laughs> but anyway so full spoilers like, then for yeah. the initiation from this point forth <clears throat> yes tim yeah. oh no i was just gonna say like every character in, and this is like pretty unlikable <laughs> like except for oh yeah i guess like the, the main character who's very nice but like everyone else it's like since you're dealing with like frat guys and like sorority girls mm-hmm. and like annoying psych majors it's like yeah it's like uh yeah everyone sucks <laughs> i'm okay with most of these people dying Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, there's there's more two likable characters. There's there's the girl who keeps it has like and a. Then, tr- oh. oh no, I'm sorry, sorry. Well, even the like and the people that are uh, uh, unlikable, they are still like enjoyable to watch because yes. they're that '80s jerky yeah, characters, yeah, yeah. you know. Likable to watch, yes. Because yeah. <laughs> there's a guy who like is attracted to the main girl Kelly, who apparently the head of the sorority is into, and after Kelly kind of like shows him away because she doesn't want anything to do with him. He just kind of goes crawling back to her. And there's not really much of a plot here, other than the fact that he's kind of weird and he dresses as, as like a... I don't know, like a sex gladiator or something for this party they go to. This is the, I feel like usually the party they go to would be like the third act, but in this movie it's actually the end of the first act, is this party yeah. that's like a... Like I say, your your inner desires costumes that they go to. Um, But yeah, he's kind of weird, but... Yeah, there's, there's the girl that's sort of the main friend of the, the of Kelly is this this girl that everyone thinks is a virgin, but she actually has like a really dark backstory that comes up because when oh, they're uh, yeah, know, yeah Jesus when they're in the uh, the mall later on and it's maybe just be the three girls who are like trying to be you know initiated <laughs> into the yeah. into the sorority, uh, 
and their, their whole goal is to try and steal the clothes of the security guard. Mm-hmm. And Kelly, even though I think the, the point is to try and somehow steal it from him, they, they actually, she's like, oh, they've got spares in the staff room. Let's just go there. <laughs> like, who cares? Uh, no one will know the difference. And so basically, the head of sorority brings in, like, three college guys to intentionally scare them and, you know, sneak up mm-hmm. on them and stuff. But once they become aware of each other, they kind of just start hanging out and they have, like, a essentially, like, a dinner party, like, inside yeah. one of the stores. And out of nowhere, uh, because someone cracks a joke about the the, the, the girl, uh, I think, is it is it Megan? Or Allison, I don't know. Whatever one is the. Sure. Uh, Beth. Yeah, God, I can't. I don't uh, know. I can't remember there's, there's so many <laughs> names. Uh, but she basically says, "Look, I'm not a virgin, okay." And she tells this story about being assaulted by her music instructor, her violin teacher, when she was twelve. Yeah. And it like everything it's... like grinds to a halt as she, as she, through teary eyes, like tells this dark story. And I'm like. I don't know if this is the movie to be doing this. Uh, no, no, this scene. I, <laughs> Not at all. No. Um, and you know, because the guy <laughs> who's kind of like flirting with her, like he was our date to the party earlier on, and he was the one dressed as the dick, and he was just saying lots of weird things. And at one point, when he's like, "Oh, there's a rumor going around that you're a virgin. I oh, might be able to help you with that." Like really kind of smart me. So she's not really like. Feel- but after this, he goes to her and like sits down next to her and. She's like, "Okay, go on, crack your jokes." And she's like wiping tears away, and he's like, "No jokes." and just like gives her a peck and she's like oh i guess i feel a little bit better um and then we just cut back to them later and they're in a bed in one of the one of the the, the bed stores <laughs> uh, were they the one were they the ones that were on beds or were they on like that someone was on a pile of carpets no, no that was I the think. that was the head of sorority and the weird creepy okay. guy who was on the, the okay. pile of carpets no they were in a bed oh. because they, they just finished getting dressed after having sex and he's oh, yeah. like all insecure and he's like oh what am a how good was a rip me kind of thing <laughs> and just basically he's like he starts to kiss her again she's like what again it's like what at our age we're you know that's expected of us it's like well okay then and then he gets uh hit with an arrow and dies oh yeah and then she gets chased after and killed um you know uh because there's a whole segment where the the third girl who's with them is like riding like roller skates around like around the the building and so you know there's a a bit of a tone there with that stuff and yeah all those vibes (laughs) <laughs> so I don't know why we focused on those characters first when we have the, the dream to talk about uh, and the sure. the main character story and trauma to discuss. So so the dream at the start is that she's a little girl, right? Her, herself, and, essentially. And and, uh, and we say it's a dream, but I mean, as far as we know, this is basically what happened. Oh, yeah. Right? We, we, yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't is even it, know it's a dream at first. We just think it's a scene yeah. uh, that we're watching. But she, she goes into what seems to be her mother's bedroom and what you think at first is her mother and father having sex and then they notice her but there's like weird edits here where it kind of cuts around where it feels like she teleports over next to the bed with them and stabs what we think is her father in the leg right and then it's like it cuts again and she's like standing over in another part of the room looking shocked at what's just happened now this actually makes sense given the twist but in the scene itself it feels really weird um but then another man walks in, and you're like, "Oh well, no, but this must be the father." And the guy in bed is actually someone who the the the, the mother's cheating on the father with. Yeah. But then there's a struggle between the the father and the uh, the you know the the half naked guy, like, and the father gets like cuckold? pushed in. Pushed <laughs> in. The... Yeah. What? I don't know. Uh, I was trying to think. Wait, who's the who's the cuckold in the in the scenario? The cuck's the husband, I think. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if we're using those those terms, which I don't particularly <laughs> like, admittedly, but time to say to go there. Uh, but the, the father hey, is we, we're using the the correct uh, definition, not yes. the way most people use it now. So, but the father gets pushed into the fire and is literally set ablaze, and he's like on fire, and then eventually, you know, like she wakes up, right? And it's like, oh no, she's actually this you know nineteen twenty year old college student, whoever she is, and she's at the sorority and they're doing the initiation stuff with candles and they've got like a whole speech and all that and then she, she ends up meeting this this, this uh, teacher's assistant this, this post-grad student who she ends up like dating and he's like studying dreams and she's telling him about the dreams and he's like oh this has got all the markings of a classic dream you've got, you got a Freudian thing going on you've got all these things <laughs> a classic dream <laughs> yeah um and they talk about at one point where like she might even have like sort of like this weird schizophrenic idea and this is where i actually guessed that she was the killer i was like oh maybe she's actually zoning out and like she's the killer herself and that's like the the idea that she has a different personality who's the killer is actually 
not a million miles away from the, what actually happens at the end. Sure. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> I got kind of in the ballpark, <coughs> but not quite. Um, but there's a whole thing where she's in like a, they've got her in a dream state and they're studying her dreams and the mother comes in and they're trying to wake her up because she's starting to like really violently react in the dream and they try to like call her name and she won't wake up and the mother says, okay, try this name instead. And it's a different surname and like they try it and it works. It's like, wait, why, why Reagan? I thought your name was Fairchild. What the hell? And it leads to some research and it turns out that, you know, like her father, the rich father she has is not actually her real father. And the, the dream must actually be a flashback of when she found her mother cheating on her father. And, but there's a whole lot of things here that don't really add up necessarily. And earlier on in the film, we see that there is a, a mental hospital where someone escapes, the, the nurse is murdered, and we see of that course. a burned man who's like doing the garden is, is, you know, like he might be the father. And the first couple of people who are killed are killed with a little pitchfork, right? That's a little, you know, gardening mm-hmm. tool. So it's kind of pointing towards him. So we're kind of thinking he's the killer. And we even see him in the mall at one point, creeping around in the background. And I, and like a blue park, I was like, is Captain Cold following them around? Like, what's going on? And anyway, the big twist of the movie, though. Why are you shaking your head at me for? Because <laughs> I cried a Captain <laughs> Cold joke? I, uh, I, I mean, uh, you need more than just a, a blue parka. That's like, if he was wearing like the, it was like, 3d-ish looking glasses or had a freeze gun or something i, I would have given it to you but just a blue parka come on so sorry if i didn't live up to your standards of references <laughs> i'll try to be better in the future <laughs> so but yeah so to the point where when everyone like once kelly's seen like half of her friends are dead and she's running around from the killer mm. She ends up on the roof with, uh, on the roof on the roof with with this this the, the real father right and he tries to talk to her but she hits him over the head with a pipe and he falls off the building <laughs> and dies. I'm like, damn, that was quick. Uh, so I, I think given the twist that's about to happen, I think what what was actually going on here is that even though the mother did like leave him and all that, I think there was like a mutual understanding that he was intentionally staying at the asylum to basically keep watch over oh, yeah, yeah. who we totally. find out about in a minute. Which is the evil twin sister. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> so, the idea being that in the opening, the reason why the editing was kind of weird is it was trying to hide the fact that it was actually two different girls. One was watching mm-hmm. and one was stabbing. And the one who yeah. was stabbing is obviously the evil one. And she's the one in the asylum. She's the one murdering everyone. She's the one who murders the the, the, the adopted like rich father. She murders the friends and all the rest of it in various ways. And yeah, the most memorable scene in the whole movie might be where you know eventually, like P- Peter, the the the, uh, the the postgrad guy who's been studying the dreams, him and his assistant have kind of figured out like some of this backstory. And he's like, oh my god, this is dangerous. This is all related to her because this really happened. And like he's thinking the uh, he's clearly thinking what we're tricked into thinking, which is that the the father is the crazy one and that he's back for revenge or something. Yeah. But he shows up. He sees Kelly. He hugs her. And then she stabs him in the side, and it's like, wait, what? But then the real <laughs> Kelly turns around the corner, and it's like, dun, dun, dun. That's not Kelly. That's Terry, her evil twin sister. So she chases, or, well, not herself, but, you know, Terry chases Kelly around a little bit, and there's a lot of maniacal back and forth of, like, I'm going to take your life, and I'm going to do this. And Because there's, there's a lot of, like, stuff in the movie where she's, like, staring at a mirror, and, like, reflection is meant to be a, a theme of the movie. I mean... Sure. <laughs> this, is a, this is a dumb slasher movie. It's not got themes, but <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. Um, and you know, so it's this. this uh, and I'll say that if you're looking for the obvious like body double in some of the shots when there's maybe two of them at the same time, it's a bit, little bit on the obvious side. Yeah. Right. We agree with that. Uh, that's a thing. I agree. <laughs> you agree. Good. Uh, I will say though, I actually thought the actress playing Kelly was even better. Like I thought she was okay as the leading girl, but. She's actually better as the, the maniacal evil step or twin sister who's trying to kill everyone. No, I no, I, I totally agree with that. I actually yeah, like once she's kinda you know, shows up and is like being full on villain, I actually like kinda dug it. I was like, oh I wanna see like more of this. <laughs> like this this is great. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh unfortunately it doesn't last too long, but it is yeah. there. Uh you know, it's 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 good stuff. Uh ultimately, I mean, how does she meet her demise again? Uh basically the mom shows up with a gun and kind of <laughs> intervenes uh and shoots, shoots her evil daughter in front of her other daughter uh 
as you do. As you do, yes. Uh, but know the truth out there. No, she knows all this. Uh, the, the the teacher's assistant does survive. He's 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 in an ambulance at the end, but he's he's okay. He's not he's not dead. Um, it just kind of ends with the you know the aftermath of all this stuff happening. Um, yeah. and it's you know it's just, uh, it's it's a fun ending. You know, it's a bit it's maybe a touch on the long side. And I think what they should have done is rather than like shorten the movie too much. I would have just restructured it so they got to the mall much quicker. I think if more of the movie took place in the mall, where it was more characters there, um, mm. and you told more of the same story beats, but just in the mall. And I get that that's hard to do because you've got, I mean, you have to have her go to this, you know, this other guy who's going to study the dreams and like research the the the, the backstory. But you can do that a bit quicker, I think, just to get the ball rolling and have it occasionally cut to them doing this stuff because because early on like the killer like kills like the you know the rich fake dad for example right i don't see any reason why that kill and some of the other ones early on couldn't have been while they're already in the mall you know like totally yeah you know have the idea be that whoever the killer is is killing some loose ends before they go to the mall to go after the main group or something like that and maybe that's a bit more generic but i do think that the movie really comes to life a bit more once it gets to the mall yeah uh and maybe it might have been nice too if uh they kind of played with the setting a little bit more Mm because like there's this one scene where um you know one of them that like they're walking through it's kind of like a uh like a christmas uh display area uh and uh actually thought that was kind of cool and creepy and like seeing all the like it's kind of like weird christmas elves (laughs) and and like mannequins and stuff uh there and i was like oh i kind of like this and i kind of thought we're gonna get more of like yeah, different people walking through different stores yeah i mean uh, I, but... yeah i could see like a scene where they're walking to like a sporting goods store and like the yeah, killer picks yeah. up you know whatever sporting item for example so we yes. get a lot of <laughs> themed... sporting item <laughs> yes a lot of themed like places but with a lot of themed kills to go along with those places maybe yeah. and ultimately it just kind of ends up being like a lot of black uh or like a you know, a lot of like back rooms and like hallways mm-hmm. and stuff like that Probably um, because that's what they had access to, let's be honest. Yeah, like, yes. They went, they went to <laughs> the sure. effort to create a couple of stores or get permission to film in a couple of stores, yeah. but ultimately, it, you know, it's it, it's more mainly just rooms in an, or hallways in an office building they've got for yeah. most of it, which is a shame. Because I think, I think it would have given the, given the movie a lot of character if it oh, yeah, totally. yeah. had all these distinct visuals and places to go. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. Um <laughs> I do like, I mean, yeah, just going, like, back to the story and stuff, like, I I like when uh, they have, like, a, a cheesy, like, 80s movie like this. It just has, like, such, like, a complicated backstory because you, like, you easily could have just done, like, hey, initiation, um, it's people trying to join a sorority and someone's killing them. Like, you know, like, that's all you need. But then they, they have all this stuff with, like, amnesia and dreams mm-hmm. and evil twins and... Yeah, yeah, you almost think like, you're watching... Dads. <laughs> <laughs> you almost think you're watching a Nightmare on Elm Street movie at one point because the way they've got her hooked up to dream machines and oh, they're, sure. they're talking about her dreams. Um, or even, like, it sounds like a, like plots of, like, a soap opera or yeah. something. <laughs> we, we have to actually acknowledge that the uh, the mother in this is played by Vera Miles, who... Do you recognize that name? No, I do not. No, well, she, she's in Psycho, and she came back for Psycho 2. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. okay. That's that actress. Uh, so it has, oh, has some cool. horror royalty in it. Uh, there you go. It's worth mentioning, you know? Yeah. So... You know, I, I mean, I don't know if anybody else in this cast would ever, ever went on to do anything notable because it, <laughs> I don't know any yeah. of them. Uh, yeah, I definitely didn't recognize anyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> the main girl, for example, who is Daphne Zuniga, which is a hell of a name. Uh, oh, she was in The Fly too. <laughs> I don't, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I, mean, I barely remember that movie, but, you know, apparently she was in that. So that's something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I... Yeah, it's it's a decent movie. It's it's just got some fun moments. Uh, It's one one of those things, though, where uh, I noticed that in the opening titles, it mentioned that music is, like, by and performed by, and it gave, like, a band. So at the party scene, it does spend, like, an extra couple of minutes just watching the band play the song as everyone's dancing. (laughs) And I think that's because maybe they had some sort of, like, promotional deal with this band. Like, okay, they get, get, like, a, a prominent scene in the movie to play the song, and you know maybe that makes sense i don't know maybe the record company pays them for that or something that's like where like half the budget comes from i don't know uh, either that or the director <laughs> it's like the director's friend's band or something yeah something like that yeah but it's <laughs> one of those things where i really felt like the forced inclusion of of like really focusing on them 
Yeah. Uh, and it happens a lot. You see it a lot in TV shows. You know, whenever like say Smallville had like a, a band at the school dance, it was always like, "Hey, it's this band that you've actually kind of heard of, which is weird. Why are they at a school?" Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's odd. True. You you two are playing a high school prom. That's very odd. <laughs> that never happened, but um, that's an extreme example. Yeah, uh, I think it's like so weird. Like, what is it with these movies where like, uh, I like I, I like when the um like the origin of the bad uh of the bad guy or the killer or whatever is that like oh they just saw like their parents having sex when they were a kid like i know it's, it's so, like, it's so I traumatic mean, you know, technically in this it's like you know not the actual dad or whatever but still it's like so tr- like traumatizing that they they have to stab the person yeah yeah um it... I think, like as a kid you would just be like hey what are you what's going on <laughs> mommy daddy what are you doing <laughs> yeah no, nothing beats of course Silent Night Deadly Night as far as oh, of course oh, no, yeah. sorry not that it's uh christmas Saturday. evil christmas evil is the one i'm thinking of yes yeah so, Saturday Night deadly <laughs> night is the is santa murdering your parents which i agree uh, which i do think would be traumatic and yes uh, we need we need some therapy yeah and i do recommend uh, if that does happen to you try to avoid uh places where they will force you to <laughs> wear a santa suit yes yes um that's, a, that's good advice do you know actually you know, uh, Silent Night Deadly has inspired a lot of things that you, you don't even realize and and, okay. and the rest of, you know, art and literature and, and <coughs> you know, the, the wider arts mediums, right? Um, okay, where is this going? <laughs> for, for example, <laughs> the idea that, you know, Santa murdering your parents uh, is this traumatic and would lead to like, the, the person growing up with some weird identity issues and some psychological trauma uh, was subtly referenced with the creation of the character of Joe Chill, because Chill, Christmassy. Yeah. Yeah. So the <laughs> Joe Chill. I mean, uh, I mean, I. When was Joe Chill first created? What was it before Silent Night Deadly Night? I don't think so. I mean, obviously the okay. Waynes were murdered long before then, but yeah. I don't think Joe Chill as a character was created till after. Uh, okay, uh, I'll give you this one i suppose for now i thought that was a funny joke and tim just no sold it completely <laughs> okay. fine <clears throat> you know i'm yeah, trying I, to figure out the logistics of with, it with a winter pun you know and the, and the classic tradition mm-hmm. of batman and robin uh sure you know i mean so. you, you could have gone with like the the actual dc uh santa villain uh hair klaus <laughs> you're after met tim i'm not even that familiar with Hair close. Uh, I think he's only shown up in uh, Ed Brubaker's Batman run. Okay. Uh, he he probably has maybe just a, a handful of uh, issues. Uh, and I could even be getting the name wrong, but there is a uh, like serial killer Santa in uh, Brubaker's Batman run. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, th- the more you know. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, is there anything else we should talk about with the initiation, though? Because, uh... uh... I mean, the... Definitely, like, the, you know, most wild part of it is the storyline. Uh, the... You already kind of mentioned it, but, like, the kills, while they're not necessarily bad, um, there isn't, like, a ton of gore to them, and I, I do like that they use a bunch of different weapons, but because there's, like, a lack of gore, and they do usually just ultimately come down to, you know, that they're just stabbings... Yeah, that isn't really, you know, much to talk about. Nah, not really. Um, and there's not even like super specific things to kind of like, you know, there's not like specific yeah. kills that are saying, "Hey, we have to mention that one because it's particularly a standout." They all kind of right. just fall into yeah. the same genre of, "Hey, here's the kills." <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah. it, it works because it's a cheesy eighty slasher movie, and it works because it has all the other tropes of a cheesy eighty slasher movie. It's just missing that that one thing that put, would put it over the edge into great like slasher movie territory. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. I think maybe like you you uh you up the kills a, a little bit, um you know make them more gory or maybe a little bit more interesting, and then like you said, just yeah get to them all faster, and then maybe kind of play with the setting a bit more. I think then, um, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it completely works still, but I think you, you would definitely bump I- it up quite a bit. I think it could be one of the greats if it did. I, I think I think either of the two things we just mentioned, which, I mean, I think definitely get to them all faster, but I think either the kills are gorier and therefore way more satisfying to watch, 
or you take the thematic <coughs> approach and actually like use a bunch of different stores and give them all a bunch of character because if you if you want to give them gore then give them character because they're in different like unique locations with different unique yeah, yeah. like implements so you know there's there's definitely a pass to go down um with that actually this movie commits a, a one of my weird pet peeve sins is it the security Uh-oh. guard uh before mm. he gets killed he he's 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 just sitting looking at a porn magazine and this is one of these things that i'm just like baffled by everything that pops up in a movie was <laughs> what are all these characters who just sit and look at porn when they can when they're just like not doing anything like just i mean it's uh the articles you know <laughs> there's uh <laughs> interesting articles there I went on a whole rant on the, the boys this past episode because there was a some porn consumption that just felt weird to me. But hey-ho, whatever. Oh. I mean, if there's anyone that knows the right way to consume porn, <laughs> I'm sure it's you. There's an art form to it, Tim. There's an art form to it. Um, but no, I just, I just find those weird things. Like, he's just, he's just looking at naked ladies and i'm like well, what are you doing and it's, it's not even the first time i've seen this was a security guard like it's almost a trope in movies that security guards just look at porn when they're mm. killing time like okay weird <laughs> um it's just another excuse to get some more boobs in the movie i suppose um yeah and it, it even implies later because like when they're going to get this because they still think the security guards are around and they, they say to the third girl who's kind of the more flirty bubbly one they're like hey you should you find the security guard and distract him and she's like how did i do that well i'm sure you'll think of something like, you know, the implication being that she's going to like flutter even though she's not supposed to be in the building he, he should theoretically freak out that there's someone in the building that snuck in somehow oh yeah um <laughs> For sure. and i'm not even sure why no one even addresses the security cameras in this mm-hmm. building because they, they they must exist has the killer like, yeah, um, got into the, the security room and wiped them all? Like, what, what's going on there? I mean, these are all, like, rich, white, privileged college kids. I I don't think they fear anything. I think, worst case scenario, they, they got, like, a call to daddy on the, uh, you know, waiting if they uh, need to get out of any jams. Yeah, but what about the killer? She's literally going to kill her twin. Oh, the killer. Um uh i don't know maybe she'll just say she was the other sister i don't know <laughs> the one who died sure <laughs> there's a flaw in this plan tim is all i'm saying there is a flaw in this plan <laughs> uh so let's just point out that the lead character the only notable thing she did at the end was kill her innocent real father by hitting them off the the roof of a building and that, I forget, did he not survive? Did he land in some boxes? Or I don't think so. Uh, if he did, I, I glossed over that detail. <laughs> I uh, I mean, maybe I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> but I thought he fell in some boxes, but I mean, it was pretty high up, so yeah, even, he... even if that was the case, maybe that might have still killed him. <laughs> You're making me doubt myself now, but I'm pretty sure he died. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure Kelly's one claim to fame in this movie is she <clears throat> killed an innocent person. Uh and maybe she's more like her sister than she thought <laughs> well no because after she does it she's like oh my god what have i done her reaction <laughs> says she has a soul at the very least um yeah i mean the, the bad thing for this movie is that there's a there's another evil twin slasher movie that i think is a blast from start to finish because it's so over the top so this mm-hmm. kind of feels a little bit more deflated in comparison to it okay the thanksgiving slasher blood rage of course is what i'm talking mm-hmm. about oh, okay okay yeah yeah, it's definitely not the, you know, cult classic uh, as Blood Rage, but yeah, yeah see that. But hey, okay, what are you, what are you rating it, Tim? What are you giving it out of 10? Uh, I think I'll give it a 6. Uh, you know, I still think, despite all those, like, flaws we talked about, um, I still had fun watching it. Like, I, <clears throat> you know, never really, even though the beginning uh, drags, like, a bit from time to time, I, I still never really felt, like, bored uh, at any mm-hmm. point watching it. And, uh, you know, the characters were entertaining enough and it was cheesy enough uh that yeah uh that while not being great i i, I still enjoyed it oh no i agree I, I think a six is perfectly fair for this uh you know it's it's watch i think you have to like slasher movies if you don't like 80 slasher movies sure. you're going to hate this uh, oh but, yeah yeah <laughs> totally but if you like cheesy 80 slasher movies i think you'll get enough out of this even if the stuff you get out of it's not the kills themselves which is you know not typical when you recommend a slasher movie but uh, yep. there is stuff here worth seeing if you like these type of things but hey there you go um if you made it this far in the review go into the comments on youtube 
and put the word... I was going to say dick, but that might get auto-flagged as, like, spam. So, <coughs> instead, put the word... Evil... I know, should, should I be telling me to put spoilers in the, uh, the comments? That's a bad uh, idea. You can say, uh, dream or something, I don't know. Mall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I try to think of something a little bit funnier than that, but... Okay. <laughs> you know what? Actually, you know what? Do you know what comment you should put in the comments? Captain Cold, right? Put the okay. words Captain Cold in the comments. You made it this far. Okay. <laughs> or Joe Chill. I'll accept either one. How <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> did we get so many ice based uh, villains and shit in this? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there you go. So I'm going to make Tim do the, the, the pose for the thumbnail. So here we go. Three, two, one. Pose. That's so insensitive, Tim. Uh, <laughs> so, so that is uh, that is the initiation on Screams After Midnight. Let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments. Please do like and subscribe, all those usual things. Uh, get us on Patreon, as we mentioned earlier, patreon.com slash TV for uh, you know bonuses and exclusives and all sorts. Uh, get us on the Twitters at Screams Midnight for updates to you know stuff coming out and jokey stuff and all sorts. Uh, go and have a look over there and get involved and, you know, stay in touch with us. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. Hopefully you're enjoying the Octoberthon and there's more movies yet to come uh, before we wrap up uh, to the big finale on October 31st, which is a movie I'm not looking forward to, but it must happen. So here we are. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies and we will see you next time.